Gracious God, your word is before us on the pages of Scripture. But your word is also before us on the pages of our hearts and our minds. We thank you for those who have shared the faith down from generation to generation. Help us now to receive these words in your scriptures and to strive to implement them in our personal and daily life. For the glory of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. The Old Testament scripture reading today is from Psalm 38. This is a psalm of David. We really do not know the precise circumstances, but it would appear that David was suffering, King David. It would appear that he was suffering from some tragic, horrible disease or illness. And he prays this prayer of petition to Almighty God in which he describes in a general way and yet maybe more specific way the trials and tribulations and the pains and sufferings he's going through and he also makes confession of his sins and prays to Almighty God. So hear this, these words from the prayer of David in Psalm 38, how he prays. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. For your arrows have sunk into me and your hand has come down on me. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no health in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head. They weigh like a burden too heavy for me. My wounds grow foul and fester because of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate. All day long I go around mourning. For my loins are filled with burning. And there is no soundness in my flesh. I am utterly spent and crushed. I groan because of the tumult of my heart. O Lord, all of my longing is known to you. My sighing is not hidden from you. My heart throbs, my strength fails me. For as the light of my eyes, it also has gone from me. My friends and companions stand aloof from my affliction, and my neighbors stand far off. Those who seek my life lay their snares. Those who seek to hurt me speak of ruin and meditate treachery all day long. But I am like the deaf I do not hear, like the mute who cannot speak. Truly, I am like one who does not hear and in whose mouth is no retort. But it is for you, O Lord, that I wait. It is you, O Lord, my God, who will answer. For I pray only, do not let them rejoice over me, those who boast against me when my foot slips. For I am ready to fall, and my pain is ever with me. I confess my iniquity. I am sorry for my sin. Those who are my foes without cause are mighty, and many of those who hate me wrongfully. Those who render me evil for good are my adversaries because I follow after good. Do not forsake me, O Lord, O my God. Do not be far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Those were the words of King David. Now let us turn to the Gospel of John in the 19th chapter <clears throat> and read some of the, uh, something about the event that occurred in Jesus' life just a matter of hours before his crucifixion. And as we, re as we read this, remember that Jesus, a human being on this earth who experienced life exactly as we do, 
that Jesus was God's own son. Jesus, in a miraculous way, was God walking amongst his people. Hear these words now from from the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 1 through 8. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. And the Jews answered Pilate, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Here ends the scripture reading for this day. May God continue to behold, bestow his blessings upon his people. Amen. God is with us. You know, there are many occasions in life where we wonder and we question if God is really with us. But yet, the reality is that as you trace through history, evidence is that God is with his people. Today, in this modern time in which we live, there continues to be pain and suffering throughout the earth. That's part of the nature of humanity, it seems. Sin causing pain and suffering to individuals, to families, to nations, to clans, to the church, to this congregation and in this congregation, in the Presbyterian, the denomination, in all Christian faith all around the world and in all people all around the world experience sufferings and pain in this life. That's just part of the characteristics of this life that we live in. A life heavily affected by our own sin. A life that's affected by our sins which hurt other people. And oftentimes, our own sins hurt ourselves as individuals. Life is not easy, is it? It is not easy. And yet, God through Scripture and God through friends and loved ones and neighbors and the church continue to stand firm that God is with us. God loves us. And he does. You know, the realities of today's situation of suffering and pain, you know, I'm going to go through a quick list, and this, believe me, is not everything. So tolerate, if you would, a little bit of of this list of pains and sufferings in today's world. The Ebola infection. Think about the pains that's causing. Think about ISIS and terrorism. Not only what it's doing to the victims far away, but you know, if you listen in our own culture, people are nervous and frightened. Think about Russia and Ukraine. You know, it's kind of fallen behind the scenes now because of these other situations. And yet, there's still conflicts and uncertainties there that we're just not hearing about. Think about the refugees who, in order to save their own lives and their family's life, have fled, have given up everything they own in the country to which they are citizens and natives of. 
and how cities have moved into other nations and created cities because they are refugees straight running to be safe from evil in their own nation. Think about what's going on in the Middle East, in Africa and Asia. A lot makes the news about that suffering, but there's one component of that suffering in all of these nations that does not make the news much. It truly does not. The sufferings that Christians are going through. You realize, you probably don't, that there have been several Presbyterian churches in Iraq and Iran who have been destroyed in the last few months and whose members, whose committed members, have been killed because they are Christians? You don't hear that on the news, do you? Maybe if you get some religious news services, you would hear more of it. People today are giving their lives for their faith. Two Presbyterian missionaries, 10 days ago, were shot. Presbyterian missionaries from the United States of America, Glenn, uh, Gwen and John Hespel, were shot as they traveled from one church to another about 10 days ago in Ethiopia. Fortunately, John was able to get his senses about him while his wife lay there suffering. And John was put blind in one eye. And he drove their vehicle. Thank goodness it was full of gas. He drove their vehicle a huge number of miles to get to the closest reasonable hospital. And he and his wife remained there, receiving the best care that this hospital could give them. John and, and, and Gwen remained there for several days. And the church was in communication. Our missions office was in communication with them and the family. And the church then decided to fly them from Ethiopia to South Africa to receive higher quality care. And word has it that both John and Gwen are doing much better. And though they will suffer blindness, and some disability the rest of their lives for their faith. We don't hear of stories like this, do we? And yet, people of tremendous faith in this world suffer the same consequences of pain and suffering that we modern people do. And that's a lot of what the Bible is really about, the faith of people. The Bible, in a sense, is an ancient summary of the faith of humanity as we, as our ancestors, our forebears, have gone through pain and suffering. You know, it all starts with that couple we talk about from time to time and maybe even laugh a little bit about. You remember Adam and Eve? You know, the scriptures report that that's where the first sin came into the world. Scriptures back in that day were not history. They were not recorded history. People didn't have that concept. In fact, the story passed many, many, many unknown generations down through believers who sat around campfires in the evening and recited stories like this. That's what archaeologists and scholars tell us. The story of Adam and Eve. Remember when suffering first came into the world? In the Garden of Paradise, Eden. Women gave birth to babies apparently and didn't suffer, but then because of Adam and Eve's sin, God got upset and he brought painfulness into the delivery of babies. And at that time, the scripture tells us that Work had been easy 
but now to plow the fields, to do whatever kind of work that needed to be done in order to survive. Work became more intensive and more difficult and challenging. But God was there. God could have squashed Adam and Eve out with his thumb and gotten rid of all humanity. But the God of love did not do that. God stood faithfully with Adam and Eve just as he stood faithfully centuries and centuries later with King David in the scriptures that we have read, in the Psalms, the prayer that David gave, King David. We don't have any idea what the circumstances were that David faced. You know, knowing that he was king, knowing that there were others who wanted to be king in his place, even one of his sons. That's suffering and pain for David, wouldn't it be? And knowing that other nations were out to get him and the Hebrew people, the ancient Israelite nation. And knowing that David committed sins, he was a human being. He faced the same temptations that we men and women today face. And he fell to some. And he suffered for it, as we read in this prayer, perhaps. And yet God stood with King David. And because of his faithfulness, David's memory has come down centuries and centuries and centuries later, where the Jewish people still hold him high, and we Christians still remember him and give thanks to him. And he's even a person in the Muslim, Islamic faith, because of their roots. He suffered. He was in pain, and yet he maintained his faith through it all. And then we come down to a number of other centuries, 2,000 years roughly, between King David and Jesus of Nazareth. And in that period of time, as the Bible describes it, God's own people, the Hebrew people, continued to sin. They continued to turn their backs on Almighty God who loved them. And yet, God continued to be with them and gave them leaders for their nation and gave them prophets to remind the everyday person that God was still there. And God would punish them for their sinfulness, their turning away from him. But the punishments would be to bring these people back, like David illustrates, in faith. Where else are we going to turn in reality as human beings for understanding, for comfort in our times of suffering and pain? God who loves us and who created us stands with us even in these days. The man Jesus of Nazareth had such strong faith in the Heavenly Father that Jesus was willing to suffer pains and general sufferings both emotionally and physically because of his faith. We read that, what happened to him. You know, the, the government, Pilate, representing the government back in that day, said, look, this guy's innocent. You know, and if you go back and you read the Gospels and other writings in the Bible, you discover that Jesus healed people, he loved people, he took care of people. And yet it was sinful people who said, no, we want the power ourselves. And he's going to suffer because we want it. And yet the scripture, the gospel here reminds us 
that in the humanity of Jesus, he suffered. Even to the point, as Matthew tells us, my God, my God, where are you? Humanity. We ask that all the time as we suffer, don't we? And yet, God is there with us. Suffering. There's another form of suffering, which I haven't mentioned yet, which happens very casually every day in our lives, pretty much. Let me tell you, a, share a story with you for a few minutes. Uh, the story could be called, if you want a title for it, it could be called Black Feathers. The Black Feathers. It's an old story. It's about a farmer's wife who started some scandalous rumors in the community about the pastor. And the rumors spread and spread and spread. You know how rumors are. You know how gossip is. And she became very ill and was confined for a lengthy time at home, and I suppose at her bed. And the pastor visited her on a regular occasion. And then one day she got well. And she came to the pastor's house and spoke with him, saying, Look, I started some rumors through my gossip, and I apologize. Would you please forgive me? And the pastor said, Yes, I will gladly forgive you for your mistake, your sinfulness. He said, But I would ask you to do one thing for me. And she was relieved, very much so, as you can well imagine. And she said, well, what is it? I would be glad to do whatever you ask me under the circumstances. And he said, go back home, and out of your flock of black chickens, with black feathers, take the feathers, all of the feathers, off of one of those chickens, would you? And bring them here to me. Can't you imagine what she thought? But she went home and she did that and was back 30 minutes later with those feathers. And the pastor thanked her and said, Now, one other step. What is it? Would you take this basket of feathers and at every corner of our small community lay some feathers down? And if you have any feathers left over, go to the bell tower in the center of town and toss them out. She thought for a moment and said, yeah, I can do that gladly. It's easy enough. And so she did. She did exactly that. And then she went back to the pastor and said, that's accomplished. And he said, one last thing. Would you please go now and pick up every one of those feathers and bring them here to me? Well, you know, she was wanting to do that, but she said, Pastor, you know that the wind has been blowing strongly today, and those feathers could be anywhere. And he, he, the pastor said, yes, you are forgiven for your sins. Because gossip and rumor can quickly go everywhere and destroy someone's life. Another sin that very silently causes suffering and pain in our lives. We human beings commit many sins, don't we? And we are not really aware of the outcomes of those sins. It may be, the sin may be to gain some personal advantage. But other people may get hurt and suffer. But God is there with us. 
God will stand firm with his people who confess their sins and turn to him and who humbly and honestly strive to live a life following the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that fantastic? Isn't that unbelievable? Isn't that something to think about and to thank God for? Join me in prayer, please. Holy and gracious God, Life is difficult. This life on earth is difficult in many, many ways. And we look so forward to the life in your heavenly kingdom where you greet us openly and lovingly as the people you created us to be. For we are really better people when we put our faith in you and we ignore the temptations of this life here. We're thankful, Heavenly Father, for your standing with us, even as we people crucified your Son, Jesus Christ, the man from Nazareth, the babe of Bethlehem. We're thankful, gracious God, for the relationship you have opened up with us. Now we ask for strength and forgiving mercy so that we can reestablish our relationship with you to make this relationship complete. Forgive us of our sins, we pray, Heavenly Father, and continue to use us as your people. Amen. Go forth in peace. Give thanks to our Heavenly Father who brought us into his beautiful creation. Give thanks to our Heavenly Father who looks forward to welcoming us into heaven and eternity. Go forth in peace and share the good news of God's love, not only with you and your family and the church, but with all people. Go in joy, and God is with you.